What's going on my Cardano friends? It is your friend Jack here and in today's video we're going to be going over how to read Cardano transactions or ADA transactions simply and practically. Before we get started, the first two websites I'm going to be using for this to actually view the transactions are going to be CardanoScan.io, which is the main Cardano blockchain explorer that I like to use. There are other ones, but this is the one I like to use. It's very similar to Etherscan for Ethereum, and I think it does the job quite well. Another site we're going to be using is Pool PM to view address contents in one simple page view um, in kind of a more visual way. So Pool PM is also really good for seeing wallet addresses contents, and we're going to be using that as well, along with Cardano Scan.io as the main blockchain explorer that we're going to be, you know, exploring these transactions through and understanding what's going on behind the transaction. Okay, the first thing we need is a transaction to look at. I've just went to this address, which is the donation address for CardanoScan.io, and I've sent them to ADA. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my wallet and go to, the tr go to the history, press the expand button on whatever wallet you're on, and you're going to have somewhere that takes you to a transaction ID. Now, in this case, I don't have to copy and paste it. I can just click on it, and then my wallet's going to bring me to the transaction ID inside of CardanoScan.io. Now, sometimes you might have to copy this hash of the transaction and paste it over into the blockchain explorer at CardanoScan.io at the top, but in this case, we're here. Now, I want to go ahead and look over what happens here. What is kind of going on and how do you tell how much ADA is being sent to someone in a transaction log or how much NFTs are being sent to someone in a transaction log. In this case, it's very simple, okay? It's not hard to understand because we're only sending ADA. Um, however, it does get a little bit complex sometimes with the more ADA you send and things like that we'll go over in a sec. But here, let's take a look. As you can see, it's from an address and the address is my address one of my wallets and it has eight ADA in it or the UTXO that I'm sending from has eight ADA in it. Basically, every time you fund your wallet or add more ADA to your wallet, you're adding another UTXO. It's not like Ethereum or it's account based, it's a different kind of system. Essentially, you can imagine like this. If you were to withdraw 100 ADA from an exchange and put it into a brand new wallet, you would have one UTXO in there. But if you were to do that for five times in the next month or so, you're now going to have the five more withdrawals or the five more UTXOs of 100 ADA to your account plus the original one. You're going to have six UTXOs. So if you go to send 600 ADA to someone, you're going to need to use all six UTXOs, meaning that this from addresses here would most likely be six different addresses in a lot of cases or six different UTXO. So it might be a little bit confusing sometimes to read, but all you need to know is the total that we're sending or the total amount that we're utilizing basically is 8 ADA. That's the UTXO size um, or that's the UTXOs all put together is 8 ADA. From that, you can see that we are giving 2 ADA to the address that we copy and pasted and then 5.83 ADA to our original address back into our UTXO that we own. So basically just going back to our account. And that's pretty much it. Usually the top one here is the one you're gonna to wanna to look at. That's the ADA that people are going to be sending to um, in the transactions. And then the rest is going back to the original UTXO in most cases. Now what I wanna do is just click a random transaction and kind of go through what's going on. Some of these are gonna be a bit confusing, but let's try one that's a bit bigger with 21,000 ADA. As you can see here, it is a transaction with, as we said, 21,000 ADA as the output. And when we scroll down, you're going to see it's from two of their UTXO addresses. So they have already two addresses in this transaction that are contributing to a 21,000 ADA output. Now, when we go here, we can see the amount being sent to a lot of different addresses by looks. Most of the time, something like this is going to be an exchange. Um, doing something uh, most of the time and you don't really need to know everything that's going on You could track every single wallet see what's going on But pretty much they're spreading out this 21,000 ADA to you know a lot of different addresses And in most case when you click on one of these addresses and you go to their controlled state key here Here's their address, but here's the state key that owns this address Which also has a bunch of other addresses 
you're going to see it has more ADA than most people. This is most likely an exchange wallet. And if we wanted to view all addresses, we can see that they have 184,000 different addresses. So this is pretty obvious. It's an exchange or it's some kind of bigger entity and probably not something you need to go too far in depth on. Now, if we go back to CardanoScan.io and click on maybe a smaller transaction, we can go ahead and see what's going on and not be bombarded with 30 different addresses being sent to. So we have a 30 ADA output, meaning 30 ADA was used. And as we can see here, it's from a one unspent transaction output or one UTXO and it's being sent to just mainly the one person, three ADA. Okay, they're spending three ADA. This is most likely their address. If we click on it here, we can go ahead and see that the state key is 4440 and ends in 8999E. And if we go back up to here and we click on this address, the original one, we can also see the state key is the same. So, might be a bit confusing sometimes, but you can tell right here, they're only spending sending three ADA pretty much. The rest of these transactions, uh, most of them are going to be returning to the original sender. Just sometimes it's going to be in a different address because it's sending back to a different UTXO. Okay, that's pretty much the basics. That's how you can view transactions. But now let's go over some with some NFTs uh, because those ones do get a bit more tricky to read. Okay, so I found a transaction with an NFT or where someone has sent an NFT. And as you can see here, they've sent 21 ADA or they've used 21 ADA in total as an output, which means they had a UTXO with about 21 ADA in it. And that's the one they used to send this NFT. So what they did is they grabbed their UTXO or they you know, opened up their wallet and they went ahead and sent not 22 ADA, but they sent an NFT here, as you can see right here from this top address, which is usually what is being sent to the receiver. And they sent one NFT of VYFINTF purple. Okay, they sent this and then they were left with this. So this is a remaining UTXO balance pretty much. And it's being sent to the same address. It's being sent back to them. And then we have this also being sent back to the same address. So they sent one NFT. It looks a lot more confusing than it is. But as you can see here, the top line this is usually what you want to look at for basic reading purposes of what's being sent and the rest is usually returned to the original address of that utxo or one that also belongs to the same state key if you want to view the state key of each address you just click on it and you're going to be able to see it right here okay you can copy it we got it copied you can go back, you can go to the other address in there and you can paste it in the top or, you know, compare, right? They're going to usually be the same exact thing. FAC 405, same thing, right? Obviously, it's the same address in this case, but that's how you can compare. And one more thing that also helps a lot if you're trying to see, you know, someone's wallet and you want to see their NFTs is you just copy the address. You copy it and you go over here. You paste it in on pool PM and you can actually see the contents of their whole wallet. Pool PM will gather all the state keys or will use a state key. So you can see not just the one UTXO's balance, but their entire wallet. And it's not hard to do that on Cardano Scan either. But yeah, you can now I can now see their entire wallet. I can see that they what they have left after sending that ADA and the NFT, because you are going to have to send at least 1.5 ADA with each NFT. And this is what they have left. If you want to go and see uh, all the addresses for a stake key, you can go ahead and click on the address um, that originally had the stake key, click on the stake key. Now you're going to see here, this is a stake key, but you can see view all addresses. And you're going to see that they have 156 addresses with a total balance of 9,000 and um, I believe it was 845. Now, if we go ahead and we copy this address, the one we just looked at the stake key for, and we put in a pool PM, you're going to see we end up getting something like this, all of their addresses and all of their balances into one page under the same stake key. Pool PM visualizes it in a great way. And then if we go back to this account and we just have their state key and we want to see what they're up to, what we can do is click on view all addresses, then navigate over to a balance that we want to check out or something with a lot of transactions like this one. We can click on it. Then we can go ahead, 
we can scroll down and we can see all of their transactions on this UTXO or this address. And this UTXO has most of their balance. So pretty much every transaction they do will come from this address in most cases. And then all we have to do if we want to look into something is we can see here, these are incoming. So it means they received these things. They didn't send ADA out and these are outgoing, meaning they sent ADA to an address. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but yeah. So what we can do if we want to check out one of these transactions, uh, you know, see, okay, what did they send? What did they give? What did they get? We can just click on the hash right here. We can open it up and we can see this is the one we just looked at. Someone sent them basically this top thing here, one ADA and one NFT. And then they also sent um, these from the UTXO we looked at earlier back to themselves because they're part of the same UTXO. So it's pretty easy to read things. Once you get the hang of this and you try out some for yourself, I do think it's going to help you a lot in just you know figuring out what's going on. If someone gives you a transaction ID, you can see, uh, for example, let's say, if they sent to the right address, you can see how much ADA they got, you can see how much ADA they sent, and it really does help troubleshoot a lot of problems or a lot of people's problems when figuring out, okay, what's going on and how did this happen? Uh, how is this person having trouble? What did they do wrong or what happened that went wrong? And yes, all transactions on the Cardano blockchain are completely public. So do with that what you will. There is even a metadata tab with transactions. Um, some transactions don't have metadata attached, but sometimes right here, there'll be a little metadata tab that people can write in a little note. Those notes are public. So if you ever write with a, a note uh, using metadata, using your wallet, just know these are public notes. Okay, now we're gonna play a fun little game where I just scroll down through a transaction and then you pause the video before I tell you what actually happened to kind of get a hang on, okay, what happened? Uh, you know, what got sent, who received what, and what exactly does this transaction mean? So I'm gonna do that now. You can pause the video after I scroll down and before I tell you what actually happened, but go ahead and look right now. Okay, so I'm going to tell you now what happened here in the video or on this transaction, if you've unpaused the video now, is basically this person right here sent two ADA to this address, okay? Now, that's an assumption most of the time, but in this case, if you go ahead and you click on these addresses, you can see that the state key will be the same, CC8 and then BE2 for the ending. And then when we click on the other one up here, we have CC8. B2. Okay, so they're the same address or same state key, meaning it's going back to the same person. And that's usually an assumption you can make um, pretty safely that this is the amount being sent to the sender. And this is the person's UTXO that is get, grabbing that two ADA from or whatever amount here that's grabbing this from the above address to send to, you know, this address. And that's the basics. That's how you read Cardano transactions. Now, I could go much more in depth into UTXOs and how everything works. But I think from a practical standpoint, this is probably enough for you to figure out most things on your own. If you want to go ahead to Cardano scan and try this out, you can just go ahead and do so go over to Cardano scan, go to the transactions on the left hand side and click on one, then try to read it, try to understand what's going on. Sometimes they get messy. In this case, you can see here, we have a token mint and a metadata tab. We're going to click on those in a minute. But you can see here, it's coming from an address. Usually the shorter addresses are, are addresses that are minting tokens. That's pretty common um, for lots for different reasons. But um, yeah, so we have an address here. They have 76 ADA outputs. And you can see they've sent an NFT and two ADA over to human 041414. This is often a minting service doing this. Uh, they all look very similar. Usually it's 1.5 to 2 ADA and they send an NFT along and then they sent the rest of the ADA back to themselves in two separate transactions. Correction, this is actually sent to two separate addresses. There could be a number of reasons basically why they would send it to addresses, especially when you're setting up a minting service for NFTs, but we're not gonna get into that today, but we can see that if we click on these addresses that they are different, 
basically addresses. You can actually tell right away because this one doesn't have a state key. When it has a very short address, that basically means their state key is left off and they don't have a state key with this address. So that's an easy way to see that it's two separate addresses and someone's been sent 56 ADA out of this. Someone's been sent uh, the two ADA out of this uh, with the NFT and someone's been sent 17 ADA um, as well. So I went ahead and I checked these two addresses are separate addresses, but I did paste this address in the pool PM to pretty much see all of their balances and see everything associated with that address. And then I could see here when I went in, I saw the NFT in the top, you can see the asset name and I found the NFT they received uh, basically with this transaction. If you want to do that yourself, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go over to the you know little NFT, click on the asset right there, and it's going to give you the details of the asset. Then all you need to do is copy this address, go it over to Pool PM, and basically just put in the policy ID uh, that we just copied, it's not at the address. Then put a dot in the URL tab, um, and then you're going to go back to it. You're going to copy the actual asset name right here. And you can go ahead and then paste it at the end here. Click enter and it's going to bring you to that NFT. And it might take a minute. And then you can actually click on the last owner or the person who owns it right now. And you could see that it is indeed the same exact address we were just looking at. Also, for looking at this transaction, we can also see there's a token mint. Basically, basically, it just says what's been minted, the asset name, the policy ID, and the fingerprint, which we could copy and paste into Pool PM and go see the asset. Or we can go to metadata and also see the all the basically what's attached to this. You know, the attributes, everything. We can see that, and it's clear as day here what's been attached to the NFT. And that's pretty much all you need to know for Cardano transactions and and that's pretty much the basics on Cardano transactions. There are more things I could go over in more complex ways, but I think from a practical standpoint, this is going to allow you to get the gist of it, find people's addresses, see what's in their balances, see what they've been up to, go over what you've been up to, and look back and verify what you've been sending, the amounts you've been sending, uh, what you sent your friend for breakfast yesterday as an NFT, or whatever else. Basically, that is the basics. I hope this video helped. If it did, please consider smashing the like button. I will make more videos on this if you would like. If you have any questions or if you have any concerns, things you got lost on, let me down in the comments. I will make another video on this if needed. And I hope you guys have a great freaking day. It's been your friend Jack. I'll see you guys in the next freaking video. Peace out.